So Elon Musk is just flip-flopping back and forward. I was quite excited when he first got in. What's your assessment of, of how he's been in charge of Twitter? Well, I'm, I'm actually a bit disappointed in Musk for the same reason that you just gave. Um, I, I think it's obvious by this point, you know, after we saw the hysterical panic under COVID, uh, after we saw Black Lives Matter, again, US, UK, quote unquote, misplaced between the two countries, something like $14 billion. The Economist put it at $11 billion, like last July. I mean, I think it's obvious as this stuff keeps going on that that sort of heterodox smart guy right has some points. But the question is, what happens when that group actually takes over leadership? So, I mean, with with Trump and the Kushners and so on, we actually saw that in U.S. politics. And the initial idea is like, OK, let's build a border wall. Let's cut down on immigration. We're heterodox, but struck a lot of people as appealing. And then the administration itself very often just seemed corrupt and incompetent. You know, again, no offense, but that, that didn't happen. Like we didn't, in fact, build a wall. Like none of those things were done, whether you support them or not. Similarly, Elon Musk, I mean, one of the best known of like the center right, edgy, funny billionaires. He's going to Mars. He took over Twitter. I mean, my expectation was sort of competent leadership in a direction I would like. And he's gone in a direction I like, but competent leadership is, is really pretty questionable. Like, I mean, the other day he ran a poll on the site asking whether he should step down as CEO and uh, whether this was intentional or not. I mean, Twitter has a left leaning audience and this came the day after he told all the e-girls and so on. They could no longer post links to their Instagram. You couldn't post your Facebook. So, I mean, the vote was a smashing defeat. It was 58 percent. I believe, yes, you should step down. So now he's in this weird position of does he just ignore the poll or does he step down and pick another CEO after what, three weeks. I mean, so it, the, the whole thing's been kind of circus like, and I think that that unfortunately is a lot of people's impression of what happens when kind of the IDW guys take over, um, his actual, the one thing I will say about Elon Musk that makes up for a lot of that is that the Twitter files are staggering. Like there's been an attempt to downplay this in mainstream media, but I mean, the thing about this that's important to me is that it's not just Twitter. Like, so Twitter had gone on the hill and essentially denied that they were using all these crazy tools to silence conservatives and heterodox voices and sex workers and so on. And almost were treating these Congress people like crazy conspiracy theorists. Like, what, what do you think we know how to do over there? Shadow banning. I mean, no, we're not taking people down to zero likes. And I mean, like what Elon Musk sent to Barry Weiss was literally the control board that they had at Twitter, where you could see the things they could put on a specific account, like Charlie Kirk's. And it was like shadow ban, ghost ban, trend ban. There were like 12 buttons you could click. This wasn't like one director could do this, like any staffer at probably the managerial level could do this. And if you look at some of the sites like Secret Bird that keep track of whether you've been shadow banned, Tens of thousands of accounts, probably mostly on the right, other than, again, sex work, have had this happen to them. So you were seeing this massive regulation of the conversation that the site was just totally lying about. And kind of last thing, but the government was involved. Like, we now know there was an FBI task force of 81 guys that was going through, that was going through Twitter and that was flagging just posts like, quote unquote, election denial, people arguing about Biden and Trump for removal. And the removal rate was 97%. So Twitter was just sort of following along with these guys and taking down posts that were flagged by the federales. Like that, that's absolutely nuts. And this went on tens of thousands of times. Just multiply, you know, 81 times, you know, enough to get 97% of times 365 days. This has been going on for five years or whatever it was. So, I mean, I, I do think that's, that's pretty staggering. Why do you think the government, which I guess uh, for the last few years, but just before, is this uh, since Biden took charge then? Because I'm just thinking if it was a right-leaning government like Trump's, then why were they pushing Twitter to delete right-leaning tweets? Well, this gets into the whole idea of the deep state. And the deep state is not some conspiracy theory. Again, like a lot of other things, like cultural Marxism by that name or another exists. Um, i.e. people want to take communist ide communist dissent ideas about patterns of power and apply them to say male female relations this is utterly non-controversial um 
what would another example of something like this be? The left-wing political parties in the USA and Europe have cheered for mass immigration for decades because they think it'll change the population in a way that benefits the left parties. That's just a fact. I mean, Time Magazine ran a famous cover showing a beautiful sort of light-skinned black person, dark-skinned white person saying like, by 2043, we'll all look like this. It might have been Newsweek. But th this is one of those things that's now being presented as kind of an odd, edgy theory that everyone agreed on until pretty recently. And that is that there are large, internal, competent, but partisan bureaucracies in the West. So, I mean, when a new president comes into the United States, a day job is teaching political science. They replace the top, it's 7,320, I believe, people in the government. So like the ambassador to Finland, this sort of thing. You know, of superior court judges that are about to retire or replace. But everyone below that, I mean, the army is part of the executive branch of government. The State Department is part of the executive branch of government. There must be 8 million people in the executive branch of government. That's an estimate. But the uh, 7 million 993,000 of them remain after the transition of power. So to say it was Trump's FBI that did something really doesn't mean much. I mean, the, the head of the FBI would be someone who served under Democrats and under Republicans and who's probably taking down criticisms of Biden and criticisms of Trump, although they have a preferred candidate. The real issue is just the, the massive regulation of speech. Like, what, what is the FBI's policy on what speech is allowable is a question worth asking. Um, and a question that Congress would have asked had they known what was happening. Why does the FBI have a policy on what speech is allowable? Like, we constantly hear... No, sorry. sorry. No, but I like that. That's it. That's the question. What 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 is the secret police's policy on speech? Like that's a that's a very valid question. And what yeah, and what interest do they have? I, I just you know, people being offended, well, why is it the FBI's job? Let leave that to other people, I feel like. And I, I think as you touched on before, the it it is a bit more complicated when you run something like Twitter. I'm sure you know this as well, than some some free speech absolutists like to think because they have to think about their advertisers. It's not really up to Twitter and YouTube all the time. And I get that because I get told that all the time because I'm always rallying against it because I'm a YouTuber. It drives me mad. But I have to understand as well. I'm trying to be more understanding of the fact they have to appease certain advertisers and things. But I think what was really insidious is what, exactly what you touched on is like, at least be honest with us. At least tell us because YouTube employs some of the same tactics when you've been, you know, I, I tried to do one or two things and I was told for months you can't do that. And I was like, why can't I when everyone else can? And they wouldn't tell me why. And I'm like, am I shadow ban? They go, we don't shadow ban. And I've just, it's just like, well, this Twitter thing's just come out and Twitter was saying the same thing for years. I wouldn't mind it. Just tell us what the thing is because those are, maybe I would still mind it. I'm not saying, you know, because it's still free speech and it's still, but why won't they, why did Twitter not tell us? A friend of mine who works in this kind of text thing, he said, he said, well, because people will try and rig it. If, if YouTuber, for example, are very clear about the rules you've broken, people will try to rig the game and get around it or something like that. But wh why do you think Twitter couldn't have just told people like, yeah, we, we did some of the shadow banning? Well, I think a small part of it is what you just said. And they'd have to deal with smart Twitter's ends, you know, Ben Shapiro on the one hand or, you know, somebody on the, on the other hand, Meza Hassan ducking around. But I think a more serious reason is that Twitter had a strong partisan bias and they wanted to ban and minimize certain accounts without being punished. I mean, I, I think that's it. Like if you, there are... It's fairly easy to track whether someone's shadow banned. I mean, you can log into Twitter from a third party account and see whether you can see them, right? That, that's a search ban. So their entire apps, I mean, I, it's not my business, but I feel like I should have put together a list of them before those are stomach. But there are a number of apps that you can use to look at whether your account is shadow banned, ghost banned, and so on. And when you talk to one of the executives from one of these companies, this is something we're planning on doing and cut the bull pretty soon on the podcast. They'll tell you, like, I mean, the majority of the people that were targeted with this were on the political right, unless they were hookers. I mean, sex workers is a better way of putting that. But unless they were strippers, unless they were selling sex, like, it was almost entirely edgy, heterodox. They mostly happened to be Caucasian males. And I, I think Twitter liked to have the ability to do that. But one segue, by the way, here, I, I said this early on and kind of clumsily went off on another path, but... The important thing about this is that it's not just Twitter. Like, one of the things that people on that kind of quantitative center right have said for years that sounded almost conspiratorial is that information is extraordinarily curated. 
Like if you go to the Wikipedia page for cultural Marxism, you notice that for the past couple of years, it's been edited repeatedly every time someone tries to change it back. So that it says something like this is a right wing anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that only Nazis would believe. This is like the first paragraph. And I've changed this myself and I've put in, you know, links to articles from like Tablet Magazine and academic journals saying like, oh, all controversial mm -hmm. commentary. And it's immediately there must be some kind of warning set. As soon as you do that, it changes back almost automatically, like very high level editors or whatever their process is, must be manipulating this information. And that. I'm sure is occurring throughout the entire internet. Like does Facebook in terms of what you see in your newsfeed have policies similar to what Twitter did with trends? A more important one, does Google do this with their searches? Like, is there a list of sites that are quite mainstream, like the Federalist on the right or Third World Press on the left that are considered unreliable and so are removed from search results? And I would recommend searching something mildly edgy, like black on white crime, on Google and then on any other site like DuckDuckGo, Yandex from Russia, and, and stick to the, the political stuff you're searching on Yandex. But I mean, like even Bing, you'll find that the Google search, the mainstream approved 96% of the market search, omits like 75% of the results. So this is almost certainly going on throughout all of the information that you receive. There's an urban, coastal, center left, upper class bias. And that's one of the bigger stories of our time. Yeah, which is sad, really, because I, I guess my, my understanding is fairly limited, but of the pioneers of the internet, the sort of beginning, you know, they were all libertarians, weren't they? And they were all about the free speech of the internet. Yeah, well, the, the founder of Wikipedia, I believe it's a Larry Sanger. I've had some conversations with him online and I've, been, I've looked at some of his research in passing. He won't use the site anymore. And I don't, I don't want to get into this whole like an inside sauce that are being oppressed because it's a whole bunch of people. I mean, it's the genuine true left that talks about class instead of all this woke nonsense. I mean, again, as I've said, it's anyone who's involved in sex work or large scale selling of something from their home. You know, it, it's a bunch of people, it's certainly conservative, certainly IDW people. But the basic idea that there are people that are literally regulating the information you can send out there. And this would be true for almost anything. Again, go on Google and search buy COVID vaccination card. Not that you necessarily should, but you're going to get dramatic. Don't break the law, kids. But you're going to get dramatically different results there than you would even on Bing. And you're going to get dramatically different results on Bing than you would on DDG or Yandex. And you understand that there are these teams of people that just got out of Brown or Penn State sitting there in button downs with purple hair, literally editing the results that you can see. So that is, that is something that I think Elon Musk did a very good job of pointing out. Now the question is where he's going to go from there. Will he remain as CEO? Will he move on? Who will the CEO be? So I don't, I don't think you've seen the best job of leadership there, but the, just the revelations themselves are pretty important. Join me on The Edge for new episodes every week. Start watching right now.